to give yourself the best chance of getting the funding that you need. It's important to make a funding plan. The reason that a written plan is a good idea is because of the scale of the funding challenge. There are many more groups looking for money than there are funds available. This is despite the needs that you may have in your community. What this means is that you're not just trying to sell the value of your own activity to a funder, but also show that your ideas and activities are a better fit for their criteria than other groups who are looking for money. And that your group is able to deliver in the way that the funder thinks is important, using their money. So it's important to show how organised you are by having a clear funding plan that sets out a step-by-step -step approach or roadmap to the funds you need and how you will get them. It's how you will know for yourself and show others the difference that you want to make with the resources you are asking for and that you have a clear idea of how you will achieve these things. So your plan should demonstrate how you base your applications on proven need. For example, if you know that women in your community are isolated, you should apply for funding to develop work to help them, like a women's support project. This will help you bring women together and you can explain how this will work and enable them to make friends. When you're desperate to fund your organisation, it can be tempting to just follow the money. We recommend that you don't do this. Don't develop new activities just because funding is available unless you know that the project is needed. This is one of the reasons for having a written funding plan where you can anticipate these things in advance. Try to avoid making random bids, for example, applying for money for a cycling project because the cash is there when you don't know if there is a need or an interest in cycling. This doesn't mean that you can't be creative in linking real needs to funding opportunities. In fact, that's one of the things that a funding plan will help you do. It's just about being careful that you don't allow the funding that's available to drag your organisation in a direction that it doesn't want to go in. A good funding plan will show that you know the needs of your community and can demonstrate the impact of your work. It can also show a funder or a partner that you have a plan for the long-term funding of your organisation that will complement any resources that they might give you. So it's important to show clearly that you know the needs of your own community in a lot of detail. That can involve gathering statistics, describing the things that affect the community, and the impact of these things on their lives. Also, your plan should show how your proposals will improve this situation and make life better for people. And very importantly, how you know that the work you're doing with the money that other organisations give you is making a difference and improving the lives of the people you seek to serve. So how does this link to your overall project plan? Well, a written funding plan with a common understanding of the funds that you need and how you're going to get those funds is different from your project plan, but it's closely linked to it. It builds on the project plan we described in module four by costing the activities you identified then and writing down where you're going to get the funds and how you will achieve that. So your project plan plus your funding plan will help make more successful funding applications. How do you use your plan in practice? Well, it's not about recording all the detail of every potential funding bid. It is an overview of all of the work that requires funding. It will contain short, medium and long term funding goals and possibly details of the funds you plan to apply for if you know these. 
It will describe the other actions that you will take to secure funding, including a description of what you will use the money for. It will be based on opportunities that are available now and others that you know may be coming up later, such as a fund that you know will be opening in six months or a year's time. In this way, it develops over time according to what you are doing. The key thing about your funding plan is that you have a picture of what you will do in the future and who needs to do what in order to achieve its overall objectives. So thinking about what to include in a funding plan, it's important to make sure that you have a note of the projects and activities that you want funded. You will find these in the project plan you developed in Module 4. You also want to describe how these relate to the community priorities that you can demonstrate that you have identified through discussion with your community. You may find Module 3 helpful in describing how you have determined these priorities. You want rough costings for each of the project or activity to give you an idea of how much you need to raise in any given year. You don't need fine detail, that can come as you develop each bid itself. You want to identify the funders with a clear picture of what the funding criteria they are willing to fund is and match these up with the priorities and the projects you identified earlier. And you should describe how you plan to build a relationship with the funders, for example, attending the events that they sometimes run to promote their funds and contact the grant officers to get them interested in the kind of work that you're doing. The plan should also include the details of the actual bids you intend to submit, the timescales for when they need to be submitted and the timescales for decisions, which can be very important if you're looking for funding to continue an activity you're already doing or to help fund your core activities. Help to put the bids together and how will you share the work amongst your group in a way that helps everyone contribute and produce high quality bids. And what are the backup plans if applications are unsuccessful? Do you have a second funder in mind, for example, if your first one rejects your ideas? So to summarise, making a funding plan is a bit like a jigsaw. If you only have one activity, then you might only need to find one funder for your work. But it's more likely that you'll have several activities, including staff and running costs. To do this, you need several funders contributing to your project costs and your core costs. You'll need to describe all of the smaller projects and find which funder is the most appropriate to fund which ones, giving you the best chance of success. So to secure the funding you need, you need to find all the pieces and make them fit together to make one big picture.